All right, zooming along. We are uh, we're going to dive into Lineage 101. Um, this is one where it's kind of a combination of the basics, but also highlighting some of our new features. Um, and this is really coming from some community feedback that Lineage was still kind of an opaque um, feature that we didn't that folks didn't really know how to interact with. So we just wanted to take a chance to just do a, a run through of, of it from start to finish. Um, John, do you want me to share my screen or do you want to take control? Yeah, you can uh, you can keep the keep the screen. Um, cool. I can, I'll just ask you to flip. But yeah, thanks for that intro, Maggie. Um, so like Maggie mentioned, we're going to do two kind of sections. One talking about how we sort of model lineage and data hub uh, at a higher level, as well as the integrations that are most notable for each type of lineage. And then we'll hand it over to Surya to kind of give a, an overview of how to emit lineage, uh, a more technical dive. So with that, I think we can we can move on. So taking a step back, uh, I just want to call out again, kind of what we how we think about end to end lineage and data hub, like what the goal of lineage as a feature really is in data hub. And I think really the, the vision is to provide full visibility into your end to end data flow that spans across uh, data platforms. Um, you know, data ecosystems are quite complex and it's very difficult to understand how data is actually moving in many cases. And this is going to help you kind of unlock two things. One is proactive impact analysis. So understanding who's going to be affected when you make a change to a particular data asset or a data job. Um, and then there's the reactive side, which is debugging something once it's already gone wrong. So if you notice that some data set is uh, showing some weird results, uh, understanding what is upstream of that data set and be able, being able to triage that more efficiently. Um, I think we can move on and we'll, we'll talk first about, um, about data set to data set lineage. <clears throat> so there's various types of, of entity to entity lineage that currently is supported on the platform. I think the most important right now is data set to data set lineage. And we model that through the, the upstream lineage aspect, which is attached to the data set entity. And this allows you to see relationships between, obviously, data sets. Um, currently, we have two notable integrations where we can extract that information automatically on your behalf. That is Snowflake. And for that, we use the access history uh, log and BigQuery, where we use the audit log. And so what you can see here in this example is, is the lineage that's been extracted from BigQuery using the audit log. Um, if you'll go to the next slide, Maggie, you can see that we also support um, Snowflake to Snowflake data set lineage. And one other thing that I'll call out is we support um, fetching lineage between Redshift and external tables. And so that's what you're going to be seeing on the left side of the screen here, where we have a Redshift table, and it's actually pointing to some external source that's on blue. Um, so that's also a new addition to, to the lineage graph uh, support. So that's the first broad type of entity to entity lineage. I think we can move on to the next one which is really about tracking lineage between data sets and, and the pipelines that they are a part of. And currently we model a concept or an entity called a data job. A data job is basically a processing node, something that takes some input data and produces some, some output data. Um, and so today that, that edge is modeled through the data job input output aspect uh, that's attached to the data job entity. Um, so you can specify the inputs that are going into a particular job, as well as the outputs that are coming out of that job. Uh, most notably, we support Airflow here. And the way we support that is via um, one of Airflow's native features, which is called a lineage backend, which allows you to specify um, you know, what are the inputs to a particular task in Airflow and what are the outputs uh, from that task. And so if you kind of annotate that on your task, we are able to behind the scenes, pick up that information and push that as lineage edges uh, into data hub automatically, as long as those annotations exist. And you can find that as actually a package on the uh, astronomer kind of marketplace under data hub, if you search that. So that's what you're seeing in the right, right corner here. Um, it's very, very easy to set up. It takes probably two lines of configuration, and it's one of the most popular, I think, integrations that we have right now. You can see on the left side there, we have uh, currently we have this lineage being captured from a Snowflake table to an Airflow job, which is doing some SQL or transformation back to a Snowflake table. So we're able to, to model that edge. I think we can move on now, Maggie. So the next uh, edge we'll talk about 
is between dashboards and charts. Um, now, some people get confused about this because a lot of people intuitively think, you know, isn't a chart only associated with one dashboard? And that's what I initially thought as well. But as I started playing around with these dashboarding tools, most of them actually allow you to kind of break out charts into reusable little submodules and then associate them with different types of dashboards. Um, so what we've done is we've modeled an explicit edge uh, between a dashboard and a chart such that charts can be attached to multiple dashboards. And that edge is modeled through the dashboard info aspect, which is attached to the dashboard entity. I think there's a, an inputs field in there, which specifies which charts are serving as the inputs to the dashboard. Uh, the integrations that I'll call out for this, this edge type are Looker, uh, where we're able to support kind of automatic extraction of relationships between models, explorers, views, um, and looks, and then uh, Superset, where we're able to obviously get those dashboard and chart relationships. And that's what you're seeing on the, on the bottom two screens here. We have Superset on the right and the Looker integration highlighted on the, on the left. Okay, I think the next one, the next one is chart to data set. So uh, mostly when you're building a chart, you're gonna have some input data set on these platforms, whether it's Looker, Mode, Superset, anything else, um, you're gonna have kind of a, a view that it serves as the basis of that chart. And so what we do is we model this chart to data set edge, and that's through the chart info aspect, which is attached to the, the chart entity. Um, the integrations we support here, again, uh, we support Superset, Looker to link to those upstream data sets, uh, whether they're coming from Snowflake or BigQuery or Redshift. Um, so that's that's a very interesting edge, I think, um, very useful. And finally, I'll just talk about a new uh, kind of in some ways a new category of edge or, or lineage support that we just rolled out recently, and that is rich lineage to capture sort of DBT native uh, lineage and using the DBT concepts themselves that you're familiar with like tables, views, tests, seeds, et cetera. Um, and so what you can see on the bottom here is we're able to actually use data sets as this base entity type and extend data sets for basically subclass data sets for each one of those uh, DBT specific concepts um, and then link them together using data set to data set lineage. And so in this chart, you can see we have a seed linking to a model which then links to the actual source table in the warehouse, in this case, Snowflake, and then back to a model and eventually into a group of tests. So it's pretty interesting. Um, we actually recently rolled out this ability to subtype base entities such as data sets so that you can actually achieve a much more native feeling experience without having to go and reinvent all of these models or, or model a bunch of new concepts on Data Hub. So very excited about this, this new integration and, and definitely looking for feedback on it. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Surya, who's going to talk about how you can actually push your own lineage, uh, custom lineage into Data Hub. OK, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, many times we basically get this, got this request where people wanted to do their own uh, custom lineage. So we this basically like uh, we have extended the samples right now. Uh, that cover all the types of lineage you have seen so far. So how to do that? Uh, here is basically a simple example of how you can emit data set to data set lineage. So in this, if you see, basically, it's basically between uh, the hive table and the upstream uh, Kafka basically topic. So uh, very simple. So you basically like uh, construct uh, the, the recommended way basically for constructing uh, most aspects these days is like uh, the MCPW. So this like, uh, Lineage aspect. So this is basically a how we construct it from this upstream thing. So uh, and simply emit using the emit uh, MCP uh, of uh, uh, the data hub rest emitter. So few things to basically note here are like most of the identifiers, right, are urns. So it's entity to entity. Any entity basically typically has an urn here. So if you see, if you wonder what these things are like, Hive is identifying the platform. So each Earn basically is essentially identifying a full entity, basically. So we specify the entities to emit simple upstream lineage, basically between data sets this way. But Maggie, if you click on samples, so I would like to people to see uh, uh, what are like samples we have. So another very important thing basically to note is whenever you emit any aspect, right, the existing aspect gets completely overwritten. 
which means if you have existing edges, they'll be gone basically. People need to like uh, know these things. So it's all documented here. We have about like uh, uh, 10 samples here covering all the types of uh, uh, lineage types that uh, John talked about. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You can feel free to basically go through the samples and provide your feedback. Awesome, thank you, uh, Surya. So yeah, just to, just to wrap up, um, we've recently rolled out more documentation around this concept. Uh, as Surya mentioned, we have examples showing every single edge type that I talked about, as well as creating every single edge type using this metadata change proposal wrapper abstraction. Um, definitely take a look at that. I, I know it's kind of a first pass at all of this, so we're going to be looking to get some feedback from the community and continue to make those docs as rich as, as we feel the, the community needs them to be. So definitely take a look, let us know. Um, I, think, I think that should be it.